Now, when we're writing Django applications, often large projects can have thousands of tests and running all of those can take a long time. You have to remember that some of these tests are going to be hitting the database, some are going to be performing some computationally intensive logic, and potentially you have a lot of objects that you're using in your tests. And if you span that across thousands of tests, that can actually be very slow to run the tests if you're running every single test in your project. So in this video, we're going to see some examples of speeding up the tests in Django and some performance optimizations that we can add to our Django test suite. We're also going to look at how we can selectively target specific groups of tests using tags. Now, one reason you might want to speed up tests is often you run your entire test suite as part of a CI CD process when you're deploying new changes. And if you want your new changes to be live very quickly so that developers can test these out on a live production website or indeed on your development environments, then optimally you want these tests to run as quickly as possible so you can get immediate feedback on what you've deployed. So we're going to come to some of these examples very soon in the video, but we are going to cover a couple of techniques that we've already used to improve performance of our tests. Now, one of these is using mocks. So if your tests involve external services, such as APIs and external caches and so on, one performance improvement would be to consider mocking those out and replacing them with mock objects. The reason for this is that tests that involve things like network connections are gonna be much slower than just using a mock object. You really don't want your test suite to depend on things like network errors and latency. So instead, mocking is a good performance optimization for writing lots of tests in Django. Now we saw some examples with unit test.mock earlier in the series. So that's one method of improving performance. Another one is something we've also seen. And that was on the test case class in Django, we have this class method here called setup test data. So this is a class level method and it allows you to create initial data at the class level once for the whole test case. So if we look at this example here, we have a class and that class has some test methods. In your normal setup function, if you create an object in the database, that's gonna happen before every single function and it's gonna be rolled back at the end of the function. So that would happen for test one and it would also happen for test two. But if you have a class that has lots of methods, you can consolidate your test setup within a single class method if you use the setup test data function. And if you do this for a class that has complex setup, and lots of test methods, that can actually be a good performance optimization. But we saw that in a previous video as well, so we're not going to dive further into that. Now, as well as that, another improvement would be to consider using the test case class and not the transaction test case. Now, we've not used transaction test case in this series. It's a bit more of an advanced topic. What we have seen is the Django class hierarchy for tests. So the simple test case will inherit from the unit test test case class and transaction test case will inherit from simple test case. And this class adds some features such as resetting the database to a known state at the beginning of each test. And the method that it uses for doing that is not as performant as the method on the test case class that we've seen so far. So you should only use transaction test case if you need to test transaction specific behavior. For example, if you're testing something that uses the select for update method in Django, you would need to use the transaction test case for that. Now, the reason that the transaction test case is slightly slower than the test case is due to the manner in which the database is reset to a known state after each test. So the transaction test case is gonna reset the database by truncating all of the tables. So basically that's gonna look at all the tables in your database and it's gonna call the truncate SQL command to truncate each one of the tables. On the other hand, the test case does not truncate tables. All it's going to do instead is enclose the test code in a database transaction and that transaction can simply be rolled back at the end of the test. And that will guarantee that the rollback at the end of the test will restore the database to its initial state. And rolling back a transaction is gonna be much quicker than truncating every single table in the database. So that is why test case can be more performant than transaction test case. And in general, if you're subclassing one of these, it should be the test case class, unless you need to test that transaction specific behavior. Now, another way to speed up tests is to run them in parallel. And this is gonna be most effective if you have a lot of tests in your database and you have a good CPU available. And all you need to do here when you run manage.py test is pass the parallel flag into the command. So let's see an example of that just now. I'm gonna go back to our project in VS Code and let's run python manage.py test. And we're gonna pass the settings module that we used in the previous video, but we can also pass dash dash parallel here. 
and that's going to run these tests in parallel. Now notice when we do this, if we look at the output here, it's created a test database and it's done that multiple times here and then destroyed these at the end of the tests. So basically Django is parallelizing the process, but it needs to create the test database on each core. And if you go back to the documentation here, when you run the test command with the parallel flag, what you gain is a speed up on multi-core hardware. So that's an example of something that you can use to really speed up the tests if you have a lot of them in a Django project. Another way to speed up tests is to use password hashing, or rather not to use it, but to override the hashing algorithm. Now the default password hasher in Django is rather slow and that's by design. But if you are authenticating users in your test suite, you might want to use a custom settings file and change the password hasher setting to a faster algorithm. For example, the MD5 algorithm. Now we've already got a custom settings file for tests, so we could paste this in. And that means whenever we authenticate a user with a password, it's going to use this algorithm instead. This is not recommended for production, as it says here, because MD5 is easily cracked. But that's not really a concern for your test suite, so you can speed this up by changing the password algorithm. Now as well as this, there's another option, and if we go back to the documentation, this is preserving the test database. You can pass the dash dash keep db option, and that's going to preserve that test database between test runs, and it's going to skip the create and destroy actions, which can greatly decrease the time to run tests. Now whether you use that or not depends on the test that you're actually running. For some tests you might want a fresh database between every run and that's an example of where this might not make sense but if you can use KeepDB then that's going to speed up your tests and potentially by quite a lot if you have a lot of test cases that are hitting the database. Now before we finish this video I want to look at a couple of extra things we can do with the Django test suite. So what I'm going to do is go to the documentation on the test command in Django. So python manage.py test we've seen that many times in this series. But there are a bunch of different options that we can use here and some of them we've seen already like keep db. What I'm going to do is scroll down here and we can see for example the parallel option and as well as just specifying parallel we can provide a number of cores that we want to use. But if we scroll down a bit further here we're going to look at tags very soon and that gives us a way to run a specific set of tests that we've tagged in the project. And finally if we go down even further this is new in Django 5 but it's the durations argument. So we can pass this along with a number and that's going to show us the n slowest test cases. So if we have performance issues in tests and we want to identify what the slowest test cases are, this durations flag is something that we can use if we have Python 3.12 or later. And of course it's new in Django 5 so you'll need to use that with Django 5 and above. Now one of the best improvements we can use is to selectively run tests and we've seen that in this series. For example when we run manage.py test and let's say we only want to run the tests from one file, for example, test middleware.py, we can pass the path to that file and it will only run those tests. So we can selectively run tests by using that method. And another way to do this is to use tags. Now what I'm gonna to do to demonstrate tags, to start with, I'm gonna close all of these open files and we're going to go to testviews.py. And let's say we wanted to tag any method that uses authentication. And I think we only have one of these actually, but we're gonna do that just now and it was on the profile page. Now for authenticated users, we wanted them to be able to access the profile page, and that's where we called the client.login method on the Django test client. So let's say that we want to tag this test method with an authentication tag. What we can do is go to the top here and bring in an import from the Django.test package. Now I'm gonna remove override settings because we removed it from this file, but we can import something called tag, and this is a decorator that we can use in our test methods. So let's scroll back down here to test profile page and the one that uses authentication here, we're going to decorate that using the tag decorator. So let's decorate that with the tag decorator and all we need to pass into this is a string or a set of strings and these are the tags that we are applying to this test method. Now we can then run the tests that are associated with that tag. So let's go back to the terminal and if we bring back the test command here, I'm going to remove the parallel flag and we can use the dash dash tag option here and we can set that to, for example, auth and it's going to find all of the tests with that tag. In this case, it's only one of them and it's going to run those tests only. And that will speed up your tests because it's going to run a subset of the tests. So if you're testing some authentication related functionality, you can tag all of the tests that use auth and then you can run that subset of tests by using a command like this and it's only going to run those tests and that's going to speed things up if you're just testing a particular feature. Now we can take this tag and if we wanted to add it to another test method, for example, the other one in test profile page, 
we can do that. And if we rerun the test command, we can now see we get two tests and they're both passing. So we've seen in this video some ways that we can improve the performance of our tests. Another one that we've not covered, for example, would be to disable logging in tests. And as well as the performance improvements, we've seen how we can tag tests and then run the tests only for those that are tagged with a specific string. So that's all for this video. We're going to move on in the next video and we're going to look at the coverage.py package and that allows you to test the code coverage that you have in a Django project. We'll move on to that in the next video.